Now let's find out more about rotational inertia or moment of inertia. We know that the translational kinetic energy is one half mv squared, and the rotational kinetic energy is one half i omega squared. Since both of these are the same kind of things, they are energy and their standard unit is joules. We will use them to derive an equation for rotational inertia. Let's consider a point mass m. By the way, a point mass is a mass that is relatively small, so we can ignore its size and say it is so small that it is just a dot, a single point. Let's consider this point mass m doing circular motion with a speed v, and the radius of the circle is r. For this particular motion, we can treat it as the translational motion of the point mass. Since it is a point mass, it is its own center of mass. So we can treat its motion as translational motion, which means its kinetic energy is 1 half mv squared. For this same motion, we can also treat it as a rotational motion. It is a mass m going around, rotating about a fixed axis that is right here at the center of the circle. So we can say this point mass m has rotational kinetic energy that equals to 1 half i omega squared. Of course, this particle has a certain amount of kinetic energy. Energy is energy. The amount of kinetic energy this point mass has should be the same no matter how we treat the motion. Whether we treat it as translational motion or rotational motion, the amount of kinetic energy it has should be the same. So these two should equal to each other. So 1 half mv squared equals to 1 half i omega squared. We can cancel the 1 half, and then we have m times v squared. Since this point mass is rotating about a fixed axis, that means the speed equals to r omega. And this equals to i omega squared, which means that we can cancel the omega squared. So we are left with i equals to m r squared. So here we have the equation for the rotational inertia of a point mass. So we can see that the rotational inertia not only depends on the mass of the object, but it also depends on the location of the mass. Specifically, it depends on how far away the mass is from the axis of rotation. For the same mass m, the closer it is to the rotational axis, the smaller the rotational inertia. The farther away it is from the rotational axis, the larger the rotational inertia.